one way or the other, huh? Last week, we began a new series of teachings that is entitled uh, From Trouble to Triumph, From Trouble to Triumph, and we all know what it is to have some trouble in our life. We are definitely living in what would cons be considered troublesome times right now, and the good news is, is no matter what kind of trouble we may be experiencing or how troublesome those times may be, we serve a God who wants to take us from that trouble into triumph in our life. We serve a God who wants us to be victorious. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? And the series is taken from the book of James, actually uh, the first chapter, first few verses is where uh, the primary focus for the series uh, is taken from. But James is such a relevant book because it is a book that is written by a pastor. He is the half-brother of Jesus, yes, James is, but he's also a pastor, so he's writing from a pastor's heart. He's with the congregation on a regular basis. He knows what they're going through, and he knows they're going through a very uh, trying some time. Uh, in fact, uh, the Bible, the scripture even speaks of, James references it in verse 1, that they're scattered abroad, and they're scattered abroad because of their lives being threatened and uh, just a lot of things that are going on uh, with Christianity being attacked at the time. So he's writing them as they're going through the trial. So I think, you know, it was pertinent to them to be hearing that then. It's pertinent, it's relevant to us right now because we're certainly going through a trying time. Amen? And uh, I've, you know, been around a few years, and I'll just tell you right now, this is one of the most trying, troublesome seasons that I've ever experienced in my life, and I'm watching the impact that it's having on so many, uh, not just with uh, the social distancing, that causes so many problems with uh, people's anxiety, depression, and so forth, and a lot uh, being said about that, being reported about that right now. There's financial issues uh, because of the economy being shut down. That's kind of turning around right now, hopefully, and and uh, other issues that just keep arising. So again, we're just living in a very troublesome time. But can I tell you, God wants to take us in this trying time, bring us through it into victory. Do you believe that? And we can have this uh, sense of victory, this attitude of being victorious while we are going through it. So last week, I just began to just kind of set the whole thing up. And I want to remind you of a couple of things I said, and really, I'm not going to go so much into new things this week, week as I, I'm going to go in a little deeper into some of the things that I shared with you last week. So We talked about how there are all kinds of trials. Uh, James refers to them as various trials. When we go through various trials, another translation says all sorts of trials. We can go through, you know trials in our marriage. We can go through financial trials. We can go through trials as we are right now as a nation, uh, you know, with the issue of race and all that uh, happening. Again, there are just so many different kinds of trials that can come our way. And the next thing we know about trials is that they're inevitable. I mean, as long as you're on planet earth, you're going to be experiencing a trial of some kind. Now, I don't want to, I'm not speaking that on you. You know, I, I know we're a, we're a people of faith and we believe for the best. But even at best, you're still going to go through some trying times in your life. Jesus said in this world, you're going to have trouble. Another translation, he actually it says it this way. In this world, you're going to go through many trials and sorrows. You're going to suffer many trials and sorrows. Jesus said that. He, and why is he telling you that so you'll expect it so you won't think it's you know strange why is this happening to me and Peter in first Peter because he's been taught by Jesus that there's going to be trials says that he says don't think it's strange whenever fiery trials not just little trials but when fiery trials come your way as though something you know strange is happening to you it's not it's you know well I'm a Christian but I love God that's right you are a Christian. You love God, but you live in a fallen world. Yeah, but I'm a faith person, and 
You know, if you're a faith person, you shouldn't go through, you shouldn't have problems. I must have sin in my life. No, it isn't that you, listen, you can sin and cause yourself more trials, but if you live a perfect life, you're still going to have trials because the world is going to bring trials your way, troublesome times. I will assure you that your adversary, the devil, is going to bring some troublesome tri uh, things your way because he wants to use those things to discourage you and defeat you. Come on. Can I get a witness? So trials are inevitable. James says, you know, count it all joy, consider it pure joy whenever you face various trials. He didn't say if you face them, he said when you face them because it's just absolutely inevitable that you're going to. So why are you camping on that, Pastor? That's just such a simple thing. I get it. We're going to face trials. Because I really do believe that the first step in being prepared to be victorious in a trial is to expect it in the first place. So that you're just not taken unaware, unprepared, come on, and uh, you know, are wondering why. You've been told why. And uh, again, you just need to expect them. They're, they're going to come your way. Amen? You know, if I told you, you know, there's a, there's a trial coming your way. You know, and, and you need to be ready for it. You know, what, what would you begin to do? How would you, you know, if nothing else, you'd begin to, on the inside, begin to think about it, get, get ready. Okay, devil, you're not going to defeat me. I'm going to stand strong in this. Okay, well, I'm telling you, there is a trial coming your way. And you should know that, that there's a trial coming. So he says, well, we're in one right now. I, and I'm telling you that, you know, there's another one after this. In fact, we've learned through this series of events that trials don't always just come one after the other. Sometimes they come while the other one's still going on. Isn't that right? You know, I, I can remember times whenever my wife and I were having marriage problems where there's a trial there and, you know, all of a sudden we hit, you know, get hit with something unexpectedly financially. And so now we're being tried. To, trials don't just come, you know, one here and one there. Sometimes trials, uh, they come in heaps. We don't, we don't like that, but they sometimes do. So trials are inevitable. They're just a part of life. And then the next thing we realize is that trials, all trials, have a purpose. And James tells us what the purpose of trials are. See, we just think, well, the enemy wants to use them to defeat us. And yes, he does to discourage us. Yes, he does. But God has a purpose in the trials also. And James doesn't even focus so much on what the enemy wants to use the trial for. You know, maybe it's because people back then are kind of like now. They were very quick to just blame the trial on the devil and, and just, you know, try to resist it and, and, you know, isn't it bad, whatever. And so James not even approaching it from that, uh, you know, perspective at all. And I love this. And it's really the perspective we need to have as believers, he says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. I'm going to talk about joy next week. You've got to have joy if you're going to be victorious through a trial. And you've got to learn how to maintain your joy as you're going through a trial. And I know that makes no sense to have joy while you're going through a trial. That's why you've got to show up next week, learn how to have joy even when you're going to go, even when you're going through trials. Consider it pure joy, brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know, you need to know this if you're going to have that joy, you need to know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. I love another translation says develop endurance. I think we relate better, understand better the word endurance. And let perseverance, let endurance finish its work, run its full course, so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. So there's so much in those three verses right there, and it's why I wanted to come back and just elaborate on them a little bit more and get you to realize that there is a divine purpose, that God has a purpose of allowing you to go through trials. God doesn't cause all of the trials that come to your life, and I say that exactly the way I meant to because I do think there are trials that God uh, there are trying times that God will, uh, will bring into your life. But most of the time, trials are either brought on by the world, by the devil, or sometimes through our own stupidity. I don't think, come on, no, nobody in here has ever caused yourself a trial, but 
It's for all those people that are watching online. We know somebody out there has, right? So the first thing James says is that they test your faith. Trials put your uh, faith to the test. And what they do is, is they prove whether or not your faith is genuine. And Peter actually even refers to it uh, that way in 1 Peter chapter 1. And so I looked up the word genuine, and I thought this was so good. Trials prove whether or not my faith is genu genuine, whether or not my faith is real. That's what the word genuine means. Not counterfeit. You know, if you somebody get, passes you a counterfeit bill, and you go to spend it, and they catch it, how many know you're not buying anything? right? You may even get in trouble. Okay. Well, sometimes I think there are people who have counterfeit faith. Now, they don't know they have counterfeit faith. You didn't know you had that counterfeit bill, but you've been, you've been given counterfeit faith. You think that if you just show up for church and because you have believed in Jesus, you're a person of faith. And so now you've got faith. And can I tell you, you've got faith to be saved but it doesn't necessarily mean you've got the kind of faith that you need to carry you through the troubles and the trials of life. Are you listening to me? And so you find out this ain't spending. This isn't working. This, you know, I, I don't have the kind of faith that I thought I did. And then it also means what is actually claimed. Do you have the kind of, do you have, you know, the kind of faith that's actually what you claim it to be? And then it means fully trustworthy. I love that part. Is your faith fully trustworthy? Will it carry you through the various seasons of life? Not just the good times, but the bad times. So tests are the great revealer. They show us how strong our faith really is. They really do prove what we believe. So let me ask you, what are the recent trials that we've been going through, the tests we've been going through, been revealing about your faith? And I was honest with you. I was transparent with you a few weeks ago, and I just told you, you know, that when this first started happening, here I am, a pastor, teach faith, and yet I found myself after a couple of weeks of being into it that I was struggling a bit in some areas. And, you know, I was, I was letting some fear into my life. Come on. I know none of you did, but I, 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 a little bit of fear. I don't like fear. Come on. Fear has torment. <laughs> Come on. Faith gives you rest. Fear will keep you up at night. Faith will let you sleep. Come on. And uh, we're worrying about, you know, God meeting needs. And not so much my needs, but the needs of the church. Because this is a huge responsibility. And I thought, you know, with all this is going on, we're not able to meet. You know, are people going to be faithful? Is, are, you know, how's this going to work? And I, again, I was just getting over into fear. And so what I realized is, is that, the trial, the test, was showing me that my faith wasn't as strong as I thought it was. So I didn't get out on myself and belittle myself or, you know, be condemned, you know, condemn myself for it. No, I did what anybody should do whenever you're not passing a test. I went back to the book and I started studying. I started going over scriptures that I knew, but I had let slip a bit and while they were in my mind, and I could remember them, they weren't really the revelation to me that they'd once been. And so I went back over and started spending some time in the Word. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus, not according to the, you know, the, the circumstances right now, the, whether or not there's a pandemic going on, but according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you know what? As I began to renew my mind with the Word of Ghent and stir myself up, put myself in remembrance of those promises, my faith started growing stronger. Are you hearing me? And fear started going out the door. You know what I found about when you get faith, fear has to leave. Faith and fear can't abide in the same place at the same time. When fear's there, faith is lacking. When faith is there, fear goes out the door. Come on. And so... What tests do, the point of the test is to reveal where you're lacking, where you still need to grow. And so right now we're all finding areas where we still need to grow in our faith. We're not quite as strong as we thought we were in that area. We've been assuming a lot of things because it's easy to assume it 
because times weren't tough, but times are tough now. And so we can't just assume we got to know. And so we get back in there and we apply ourselves. So that's the, that's the point of a test, to reveal where I'm lacking. The goal of the test, though, what's the goal of any test? What was the, you remember when you got your driver's license? Yeah, when you went and took the test, what was the objective? What was the goal? Pass the test. You remember whenever you were trying to get into college and you had to take the test? What was the goal? To pass the test. There's only one goal in a test, and that's to pass it. Amen? How many of you want to pass the test that the trials bring to you in life? You absolutely do. Does every Christian, because they go through a trial, pass the test? No, because they don't try to discover where they're lacking. They don't even focus on what it's revealing. They focus on the devil. They focus on what's not right. They start complaining. They start whining instead of doing what they need to be growing and improving and getting better and getting stronger so they can pass the test. The point of the test, the, the goal of the test is to pass the test. Amen. And Peter actually says that, excuse me, James says that just a little bit down. Uh, in verse 12, James chapter 1, I love this. Listen to this. He says, if, you know, not necessarily will this be the case, but if your faith remains strong, even when surrounded by life's difficulties, even when there's a pandemic going on, even when they've shut down the economy, even when there's trouble between the races or whatever, come on. I mean, no, there's just all kinds of stuff. Even when you're surrounded by life's difficulties, my faith can be strong even then. He says, you'll continue if your faith remains strong, even during the troublesome times. You will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. How many of you want to just keep experiencing the blessings of God right through this pandemic and what, right through whatever else comes your way? Your faith's got to stay strong. True happiness. And really a better word there is joy, and I'll, I'll talk about that next week. True joy comes as you pass the test with faith and you receive the victorious crown of life promised to every lover of God. How many of you are lovers of God? How many of you want to receive that victorious crown of life? But it only comes to the victor. So it says, if I just hold on, one of these days I'm going to go see Jesus. Yes, you are. And I'm going to get that victor's crown. I don't know about that. I don't think that's the kind of overcoming he's talking about. I think he's talking about that there is a crown that comes to us as overcomers. And you know what? We, 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 we prove that we're overcomers right now in this life. 1 John 5, 4 says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. If you're born of God, you ought to be overcoming. Anybody can overcome. There's no overcoming really even in it. Anybody can overcome when times are good. Come on, it takes faith. How do I know that? It takes faith to overcome in the trials of life because uh, 1 John 5, 4 says, for whoever, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is how they overcome the world, even through their faith. You got to have faith, but you got to have the kind of faith that will carry you through the difficult seasons in your life. Everybody, how many of you want to pass the test? I want to go through this and pass the test. I don't want to go, you know, I, I used to hear uh, people, you know, use this phrase. It's amazing the things you hear, you know, different phrases when you're growing up, don't even know what they mean. But you just repeat them. And I repeated this one for a long time because I heard my dad say it. He'd say, you, you know, by the skin of your teeth. And I remember hearing sometimes, man, you, you pass that, but by the skin of your teeth. Well, I got to checking her and I found out there ain't no skin on my teeth. <laughs> Come on. So I, that was pretty thin, right? Yeah. I don't want to pass. I don't want to just bear. I don't want to be one of those Christians who bear, just, I made it. I made it. I'm beat up. I'm wore out. I didn't know if I could make it any longer, but I made it. Man, I don't want to be that Christian. I want to be strong in the Lord and in power of his might. I want to be strong all the way through the trial. I want to be an inspiration to my kids, to my, to my boys and my daughter and, all my, and my grandkids. Come on, are you all hearing me? I want to be an inspiration to you. You know what? You need to be an inspiration to people around you also, and you do that right now by being strong through this. They look at you and, you know, it's a great opportunity to be a witness, a testimony for the Lord. Now, if you're discouraged and defeated like everybody else, not a good testimony. 
I can't tell any difference. But if you're going through this and you're strong and you're doing good and you're keeping a good attitude, somebody says, man, how are you doing that with everything that's going on in our world and in your life? Well, I just know the Lord and I know he's a God who keeps his promise and he's been faithful to me. He's seen me through so many times. He'll see me through this one too. Amen. How many of you would agree? That's a great witness. Yeah, that's the kind of witness we all need to be. So what's the will of God for my life? That your faith remains strong in the face of life's challenges, that you continue to experience the untold blessings of God, and that you overcome and receive the crown of life. But here's the thing I know. I've been a pastor a long time. Uh, this church for 40 years this December. I see some of the founding members sitting back here today. And let me tell you what I notice about these founding men, uh, members that I see sitting back here today. They're just like me. They're a little older than they were when we founded the place. <laughs> yeah, we got a few gray hairs. But anyway, it's so cool to still have. I, the, I think the only founding members we don't still have with us are in a better place right now. And they've gone on to be with the Lord. Come on. And uh, yeah, they've gone on to be with the Lord. So again, it's good. I just saw them back there and just thought I'd say that. So, I've been a pastor many years, and what I've learned is not everybody passed the test. And some people, come on, have you ever seen anybody who just keeps, they keep going through the same thing over and over and over again? You know why? Because they're not passing the test. The only way you move on to the next thing, the only way you move on to the next level is to pass the test of what you're going through right now. Isn't that right? Whether it's school or whatever it may be, you got to pass this test to go to the next level. Can I tell you, God has bigger and better and greater things for you. God has a better marriage for you than what you have right now. God has better, you know, you're doing better financially than what you're doing right now. But in order to get there, you've got to pass the test of going through the trials that you're going through in that marriage, in your finances, in your ministry, whatever, so that God can take you to the next level where there's even better things. Amen? But can I tell you, when you get to the new level, you know what Joyce Meyer says, new level, new devils. So it's not going to be, you're not going to have less trials when you get there. You, you're probably going to have some bigger and some badder ones, right? And so he says, trials test our faith, and i got to hurry. Trials test our faith. Trials also produce endurance. And that is a quality every one of us need if we're going to be victorious in life, if we're going to be able to make it through trying times. Because a lot of people quit. A lot of people don't go the distance. They don't have the kind of endurance that they need. And you know, there's only one way for you to develop endurance, and that's by going through trying times. You can't develop endurance and God just get rid of everything that ever comes your way real quick. No. You've got to, there's, you got to be allowed to go through some stuff for a while, and God just builds that endurance on the inside of you. I love the definition of endurance is staying power. Come on, how many of you want to have some staying power? The ability to handle pressure. Man, I want to get where I can handle whatever life brings because life's going to bring some stuff. But if that's going to happen, I've got to have this quality of endurance that is being developed on the inside of me. I used to not be able to handle a lot. I can handle a lot now, a lot more than I used to. In fact, you ask my kids, I remember Brock this was the thing. I was surprised. I thought he would mention something else when asked what was the quality that he admired most about his dad. He's all of 20 at the time, 19. And he said, the quality that I admire most about my dad is his ability to stay the same under pressure. My dad's very consistent. My dad's very strong. When trouble comes, he doesn't act like it bothers him at all. Now, sometimes I'm like a duck. Sometimes I'm cool and calm on the outside, but I'm paddling like the dickens beneath. You know what I'm talking about? I actually, I'm struggling a little more, maybe what they would think, but I've gotten where, you know, I'm not, I'm not an emotional Christian. I'm not up one day and down the next. I don't get real high because I know life's going to bring me a challenge, you know, really soon anyway. This high to, in this moment could be met before the day's over by something negative that could happen, so I'm not going to get real high and you know, why Why that happen? I just, just when things were good. I don't say that. I'm not going to say that. All that does is set me up. Come on. For 
anger, for fear, for lots of things. I'm just not going to do that. And I don't get real down when times change and get mad. Do you know why? Because good times, bad times, they're both temporal. Good times can change real quick, but bad times change too. Can I tell you something about this pandemic and everything that's come with it? This is going to pass. And we'll come into a good time. But can I tell you, somewhere on the good time, there'll be some bad times. So come on, let's develop the quality of endurance so that we just go through whatever it is. We just go through it well, no matter what, and no, no matter how long it lasts. Amen? Got to close with this. But he says, and the whole point of developing this endurance is so that you can come to the place where you reach maturity. You become mature. You're not childish. You're not an immature Christian with childish qualities. Nobody has those in here. Right? Come on. Nobody needs to do any growing up in here. Come on. Listen, I figure if I need to grow up, everybody else in this room needs to grow up. Yeah. And I know you need to. But anyway. Yeah. I've been with you a lot. I know you need to grow up. So anyway. That we may become mature, complete, lacking nothing. Now, when you read that, you think, oh, yeah, that's what I want to be. Do you even know what it means? So I looked up those words, mature, complete, lacking nothing. The word mature means having the mental <laughs> and emotional, emotional qualities of an adult, not up and down like a child. Reaching the end goal. That's what mature means. You reach an end goal. Our end goal is to become like Christ. Boy, he was pretty consistent under in trials, wasn't he? And then so that we are functioning at full strength, full capacity, and effectiveness. I want to function at full strength, full capacity, and full effectiveness, but that only happens as I grow up in Christ, as I mature in Christ, as I get a mature perspective on life and trials. Amen? If I don't grow up, I'm never going to be full strength, full capacity. The word complete means no weaknesses. Ooh. Complete in every way. Now, let me tell you how you get where you have no weaknesses. That's God's goal. You see where you have no weaknesses. <laughs> you got any? Of course. While you're going through the trial, he addresses the weaknesses. He addresses the issues in your life. I've never dealt with anything in my life that I can remember that made a major change in me whenever times were good. I got kind of cocky. I got a little arrogant. I thought, you're a man of faith. Wow. Don't you wish you could be like me? But then I'd have life slap me upside the head. And I'd realize, you're not all that in a bag of chips. You're very dependent upon God. Come on, are you all hearing me? And there's some stuff on the inside of you that is causing you problems in your life and keep you from being mature, keeping you from being effective. Anger, control, other things. We're going to address those things. You know when they got addressed? When I was going through a trial. When I was going through a difficult time. Do you know when marriages get better? When they go through a trial and they deal with their issues while they're going through the trial. Do you know when people's finances will get better? When they're going through a financial struggle and they start addressing the issues in their finances they should have addressed anyway. They get rid of the weakness and there's a new strength there. Amen. That you may be mature, complete. This is the one I like goal is to get you where you're lacking nothing and the word lacking nothing there means not deficient in any way not inferior equal to the challenge so God wants to bring me to the place where I'm just not deficient it doesn't make any difference what life brings against me I'm not deficient I'm not inferior to what is coming against me and I love David whenever he walks out there on the battlefield, you know. All of the great men of battle, great men of war, wouldn't walk out there because they felt inferior to Goliath. The difference between them and David was, is even as a young man, 17-year-old shepherd, boy, God's been dealing with his weaknesses, and he probably didn't even know it. And he's going through these trials. He faces a lion while he's watching his father's sheep. He grabs that lion by the beard, and he kills him. Wow. That's a, that's a brave young man. He's dealing with some fear there, isn't he? Who, who knows what else? A bear comes. He says, and he says he killed the bear too. 
So whenever he sees Goliath walk out there on that battlefield, do you know what he doesn't feel? He doesn't feel inferior. He doesn't feel deficient. Saul said, he's been a warrior since he was a youth, and he's a mighty, mighty man of war now, and you're just a youth. Well, what he didn't know was is what God had been doing on the inside of him that prepared him for that moment. And so no sense of inferiority. He said, you know what? Here's the deal. I fought that lion. I fought that bear. This guy's going to be just like him. Mm. He's not deficient. How many of you want to get where no matter what life brings, you are not deficient in any way? I'll leave you with this thought. God doesn't shield you from the trials of life, protect you from the trials of life. That's not... That would not be a good father, although you would think it would be. I'm not saying there aren't some things he doesn't. He, I'm sure he does. He holds back the enemy, certainly, as far as what he can do. But God doesn't keep us from experiencing trouble. Do you know why? Because that would not make us strong at all. That would make us very weak. What he does is, is he allows us to go through troubling tr times, times that the enemy means for evil, times that the enemy means to discourage us and to destroy us, to defeat us. And he redeems those and he uses them for our good to develop us and to work good things into our life. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind when I go through a trial, I'm not going to give the devil glory and get into fear and, and just try to make it through. Man, I'm going to say, God, what do you want to do in me? Where are the deficiencies in my life? Where are the weaknesses? What are the weaknesses that you want to address in me? Begin to address them, Lord. I give you, you know, and I start working with God because in everything you face in life, can I tell you, there's always God's part and there's always your part. And you do your part. How I many know God will always do his? Amen. Did you get anything out of this today?